Well, I think the first thing they need to do is take time to understand how the policy process works. I think that it's not just a matter of uh, preaching truth to the policymaker and imagining that that's how policy works. It's not like that. And I think that if scientists really want to impact on policy, they need to take the time to understand the policy process, as well as reflecting on the interaction between the policy process, the political process, the public process, and the relationship to, and to science. Now, be, once you go beyond that, the other issues are how you do communicate, humility, Admitting the limits of science is very important. Science does not have all the answers. And in fact, most of the decisions that are made on society are informed by science, if it's well presented, but are decided on a whole range of societal values and other dimensions. And it needs to be done in a way that scientists do so in a way that they are seen to be trustworthy. If they exaggerate their claims, if they go beyond the evidence too far, or if it's seen to be supporting their own vested interests, then they'll have less impact. Well, policy makers have lots of dimensions they have to consider. Public opinion, electoral contracts, fiscal priorities, diplomatic considerations, as many other things. And every decision a policy maker makes it impacts on different groups of stakeholders in different ways. What science can do, if it's well presented, can help them choose between the options in ways that makes it more likely they'll achieve the outcomes they want to achieve. But I think it's not a matter of policy makers trusting in science as much as policy makers and scientists having appropriate mechanisms to have an interchange. It's, these are such different cultures. They're fundamentally different. They, they're working on different time bases. They're working with different definitions of risk and probability. They're working with different languages. Uh, they're working to different dynamics. That you need people that are actually translators between these two cultures in both directions if you're not going to have a faulty understanding in both directions. And that's what's emerging around the world, is people who are trained and have skill sets in both the policy community and the science community acting as boundary organisations or brokers between these two cultures. Well, I think there's a huge shift going on in science. Science has stood apart from society for so long and it needs to become much more embedded in society. And that's more than saying just the words, which are easy to say, but it's going to mean involving citizens in the processes of science through concepts like co-design, uh, co-production, and particularly an extended peer review where the citizens have a role through different mechanisms and what is and what is not done. And clearly citizens ultimately determine what's, how science is used. I mean, that is a citizen's judgment, not a scientist's judgment. But these are very threatening concepts to the traditional institutions of science. And I think there's going to be quite a lot of tension and difficulty over the next two or three decades as these, what are sometimes called post-normal concepts, of extended peer review, co-design, co-production into the mainstream of science.